up BFFs? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shalitha Maxine and you are officially a BFF. So for today's client tutorial, the category is definitely skin. I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with the eye look. Um, she was coming in for a birthday photo shoot and she showed me a picture of her dress so I kind of thought of this cute like half glittered cut crease. Not a lot of glitter on the lid because her dress was kind of blingy. And a little bit of rhinestones in there. So, of course, we did her brows off camera. You guys know how I do my brows. And I am now carving them out with e.l.f. concealer. I will leave the exact shades down below. Um, but I'm using the lightest shade which in my 1-2-3 method for her um, tail of her brow. Of course, this is going to act as a brow highlight. And I am using a darker shade um, to go ahead and conceal the remaining um, brow. And I'm going to do it drag it until they meet this is to prevent that halo eye that is so outdated i'm gonna make sure i fix up any imperfections always holding at the arch you want to do that to ensure a great symmetry now i'm taking my morphe 504 brush and of course pressing that concealer into her lid this will help with discoloration as well as a backup base for the primer now i am using my final concealer this is the darkest shade so number three in my one two three method and i'm gonna go ahead and carve out the top of her brow the third concealer in my one two three method is always the closest to my client's skin tone i'm gonna go ahead and buff that out um i'll be doing a detailed video on that one two three method that i always talk about so don't worry You want to make sure that you reduce any harsh lines so always blend out the edges to diffuse those harsh lines. I noticed that I wanted her tailbone to be just a little bit brighter so I did take a brighter shade. Um, I think this is the NARS uh, concealer pot and I like to use their pot because the cream is, has a thick consistency and it sets really well on the lid. Now I'm taking my P. Louise Rumor Base in the shade 1 and I am going to go ahead and push that into her skin for her shadow primer. You want to make sure it is as smooth and streak free as possible. This will give you the best payoff with your shadow. Picking up my favorite M433 brush, I am patting my transition shade first, which is a light orange color. Um, it's almost like a muted orange. It's not super duper bright. Again, this is my transition shade. Now I'm using that brown from the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place, and I'm placing that right in the crease. This will um, be the main color that you see behind my client's uh, eye look. Remember, anytime that you're dipping into another color, you want to use a brand new brush um, because if you use one brush for all three colors, it's going to end up looking like one color and you're not going to be able to achieve that gradient effect that we look for. Now I'm using another clean M433 brush and I use those two burgundies from the 3502 palette and that will be my final color. That is the base color. Um, it's like a maybe dark burgundy. I use that um, to pet in on top of the crease color. Now I picked up my P. Louise Rumor Base in the shade zero because I want true color payoff. So I'm using a white primer. And I am also using my MAC 252 brush to carve out my client's cut crease. Again, I wasn't really sure where I was going with this eye look. Um, I knew that I wanted to do a matte eye, so that's why I did not pick up a metallic base to carve out her cut crease. I also wanted to do the Vaseline method, but my client was already running late and that can add easy 10-15 minutes to the look. So I'm taking my time using this extremely flattened 252 brush and I'm making sure I carve out her cut crease as slowly as possible. It's very easy to mess up um, if you're not paying attention. So you want to make sure you take your time and you want to do short strokes 
as well as pull the base down once you've already formed your cut crease you can go ahead and pull that base down to the end of the lid Picking up my Morphe E23 brush, which is like a flat, dense brush, I'm going to go ahead and tap a lot of that product away. Whenever you're doing a matte look, you want to make sure your, your primer is as dry or semi-tacky as possible. Now I'm taking a flat eyeshadow brush and I'm just pulling down the edges of that cut crease because you will see a lot of product build up and that's what you want to avoid. Now I'm taking a, that same M433 brush but I'm using the one that I use for the brown uh, Zulu shade and I am patting that on the outer corner of that cut crease. We're going to do an ombre effect so this is the best way to achieve that. Now I'm using that burgundy shade that we picked up from the Morphe 3502 palette and I'm going right on top of that brown shade. Picking up another clean M433 brush. I'm sorry this is moving kind of fast. I am using a tan shade from a palette that will be releasing soon which I'm really excited about um, and I'm patting that onto the cut crease. Picking up a small e.l.f. smudge brush, I just went back into that Zulu palette. And I'm really not sure what I was going for here. Maybe I wanted to do some type of faded look on the bottom. Yeah, I don't know. Whenever I'm in my zone, I just be picking up anything just to see if something works. Just <laughs> throwing stuff at the wall to see if it sticks, honestly. But I went ahead and took those same colors I used on the edge of that cut crease. And I just built it up at the bottom of her lid. Um... Yeah, now that I think about it, I wonder why I did that. Now I'm using a Kiss Lash Glue, and I'm applying the lash glue to the edge of her cut crease because that's where we're going to be applying the glitter. I'm using a iridescent glitter. I believe this is in the shade Fairy Tale from Glow Up Academy, and I am taking a flat um, M167 brush from Morphe to apply that glitter, and I'm just pressing it right on top of where we applied the glue. And now I'm taking my Inglot Gel Liner 77 and I am carving out a liner. We're not going to do a wing line with this look. We're just going to do a nice angled liner. I'm using a MAC angled brush um, to achieve that. Now with this liner, it dries really fast. You guys know I'm not familiar with this method at all. I like to just pick up my um, liquid liner, keep it pushing. But I said I wanted to try something new. I like the way this liner um, mattifies. So that's why I went ahead and picked that up. You'll see me going back and forth to revise it to get it to where I want it to be. I want it a little thicker towards the end and thin um, in the inner corner. For a little added pop, I took the Playin' and Makeup by Yolando White Don't Crack Liner. And um, I went ahead and did a double line. I'm going to be honest, that liner definitely cracks. I just think it's something with white liners, honestly. I heard Christian Dior white liner does not crack, but I'm not paying over $50. For, I'm not paying $50, period, for a liner. So I would never know if that's true or not. <laughs> I'm using um, a lash glue to uh, apply these rhinestones that I got. I just thought that would be a, you know, a cute little touch to her eye look taking on my makeup cloth excuse me and I went ahead and wiped out any fallout that we got from the eye look I'm also taking that NYX ultra pearl pigment and I am placing that right in the corner on her tear ducts you guys know I love that it just does something for me for foundations I'm using black opals foundation in black walnut Juvia's Place in Congo for the perimeter and I mixed um, two NARS uh, conceal, um, sorry, foundations for the center of her face. This is my 1-2-3 method. Again, we never apply three foundations on top of each other. They are all in different sections of my client's face and this gives them that the fullest coverage possible. 
Um, and this is my way. This is not everybody else's way. I don't expect people to adopt this way, but this works best for me um, and my clients. I spray some continuous setting mist over her face to help blend out um, the foundations. We are using two different consistencies, so we need something to break it up and make sure they blend together. Taking my Real Techniques Instapot brush, and of course, I'm going to be buffing all foundations into her skin. picked up my elf blending brush and I'm just going to be patting away this is taking away some of the oils that the foundation started to oxidize from and I'm um, just making sure everything blends out as seamlessly as possible using another elf concealer for her under eye highlight I'm not exactly sure of the shade but I will leave it down below I am beginning to highlight the areas of her face of course under eye the corner of the mouth, chin, forehead, and the bridge of her nose. Taking a lighter shade and going directly under her eye. Um, we all love that highlighted under eye. To me, that just completes a look. Taking my Real Technique setting brush and I'm just going to start blending everything in. Of course, starting with the edges because that's the part that dries the fastest. Leaving the inner part under, like directly under the eye last. We want to get the best coverage possible. So the longer you let your concealer sit on your client's face or your face, the best coverage that you'll be getting. Because if you start it to blend out as soon as the concealer hits your face, it's going to be extremely streaky and you're not going to get the cover the full coverage if you're looking for that. Picking up that Juvia's Place in a uh, shade stick in the shade Congo, I am going to be contouring my client's face, hollows of the cheek, jawline, forehead, nose, and yeah, that's it. I'm going to be using a Instapot blush brush to press that contour color in. Taking my Becca Set and Refresh um, powder in the shade, I believe that was the deep shade, I went ahead and packed that onto the parts that we highlighted. Now I'm using my Makeup Revolution bronzer in the shade Deep Dark and an e.l.f. highlighting brush to go ahead and set that cream contour. It is important that you set your cream contour with a powder so it actually pops after the makeup. Sometimes the contour has a tendency of getting lost once you start applying your skin finish and everything. So the best way to get it to show up is, of course, to set it, especially if you're using a cream contour. Went ahead and used that Becca um, Set and Refresh to highlight, to set all the areas of her face that we highlighted. I'll also be using Makeup Revolution um, Terracotta to go ahead and brighten up that under eye highlight just a little bit. Now I'm using my Real Techniques Expert Eye Brush and I am um, blending out her nose contour going to the sides and pulling straight down.
and using my Laura Geller um, blush, baked blush, I went ahead and gave sis some blush. I'm a blush person. You guys know this. I love me a good blush. Now I'm using that Makeup Revolution bronzer to go ahead and set that cream contour on her nose. Um, just to deepen it up a little bit more. Went ahead and took my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist to just spray all around her face. And we're going to press that setting mist into her face because we do not want those water beads to dry on our client's face. Using my Colossal Lash. I'm going to go ahead and um, match her natural lashes with the falsies because that gap in between is like cringeworthy. So we need to make sure we properly match the natural lashes to our client's falsies so we do not get that gap. Went ahead, pick up that foundation brush. I didn't add any other product. This is just whatever product was left on the brush to blend everything to make sure there isn't any harsh lines, any lines of demarcation. Now I'm using a MAC Compact Highlighter and I went ahead and applied it to the apples of her cheeks. Um, the Compact Highlighter that I'm using came from a holiday kit, which I love to use for my deep tone clients using a blurring concealer brush i went ahead and just fixed any lines or streakiness that i saw throughout her makeup now of course i'm using my stay matte um lipstick in the shade protector and i'm going to go ahead and line her lips also using nyx abu dhabi's um soft matte cream in the shade abu dhabi in the middle to give her a nice uh pinkish nudish glossy lip Taking a flat eyeshadow brush, I went ahead and highlighted the bridge of her nose. Now I'm blending everything back in with that foundation brush. My signature tip of the nose, of course, putting that right on her little nose. Her nose is like perfect for that. <laughs> now I am taking my Coop and Daisy, um, I think it's Up All Night Setting Spray to set her face she is very oily so you want to make sure you finish off with a mattifying setting spray oh my god she looked absolutely stunning her skin was just like butter loved everything about this look thank you guys so much for joining me and i'll catch you guys in my next tutorial give me a big thumbs up appreciate it